wife is acting up a bit. And your constant shouting at me isn't helping it any. I don't need to pay you to tell me my heart is acting up. What I want to know is, how much time have I got? Well, that's difficult to say. If you avoid all excitement, I think I can say a year, possibly two. A year, possibly two. Yes, but only if you do as I say. For one thing, there's no reason you should insist on remaining in this darkened bedroom month after month. Why, it's been a year since you've been out of this room. Are you going to start on that again? This living in complete seclusion is bad for you. You should leave this room and see people. Take an interest in No, life. Dr. Jeffries. I won't have my maid pushing me around in a wheelchair, the object of everyone's pity. I prefer to remain in my room and have people think of me as I was. Not as I am. As your physician, I insist. I said that I prefer to remain in this room in that final. Please, Mrs. Richards. Your heart. Then stop trying to make me do things I don't want to do. Very well. Only I can't see why you refuse to have any visitors. It'll give you some interest in things. It may surprise you to know, Doctor, that I am expecting two visitors. Indeed? What made you change your mind? I think it's time I drew my will. Before I do so, I want to get acquainted with my only living relatives. My former husband's nephew and niece, Gerald and Millicent. I haven't seen them since they were children, and I'm curious to see what they've become. I understand Millicent is an actress. An actress? You don't mean that your niece is Millie Richards, do you? Yes, have you heard of her? Of course. She's one of Broadway's leading actresses. I saw her in a play recently and thought she was excellent. <laughs> she probably drinks and smokes and has been married a half a dozen times. I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. Before I draw up my will, I intend to learn everything about her and her brother Gerald. He's 22 and probably never worked a day in his life. Aren't you being unfair, judging them before you've even seen them? Oh, perhaps. But I'll give them both every opportunity to prove they're worthy of the Richards' fortune. They said they'd be here in time for lunch. They should be on their way now. Oh, my head. How's the hangover, brother dear? Painful, I hope. Millie, what am I doing in your car? Where are we going? Have you forgotten, darling? This is the day we were invited to visit Aunt Martha. You remember Aunt Martha? She's the one with all that money. Save it, will you? I'm in no mood for your witticism. Well, considering I spent half of last night looking for you under nightclub tables, you might be a little more grateful. I can recall doing as much for you. Where are we, anyway? About 20 miles from Aunt Martha's. Oh, my. What a night. Yes, wasn't it, darling? Everywhere I went looking for you, they gave me IOUs you'd left behind. Exactly how much do you owe around town? Oh, three months ago, it was $11,000. That means you probably owe twice as much mm. by now. Look, Millie, you've got to help me. If I don't clear up my debt soon, I'll be in real trouble. Then what exactly am I supposed to do? You've got to lend me enough money to hold off my creditors. Lend you money? Oh, you may not know it, Gerald, dear, but I'm in far deeper than you are. But you were getting a thousand a week for playing the lead, and why not be happy? How could you be in debt? It's really very simple. I was getting a thousand a week. I was spending two thousand. Oh, that makes everything just perfect. Both of us so deeply in debt, we probably won't dare go back to town. Perhaps after this visit to Aunt Martha, we'll be able to go back to town in different circumstances. What do you mean? Have you forgotten Aunt Martha has something like four million dollars? So what? You think she'll lend us money to pay our debts after not even seeing us for 20 years? Gerald, you're a fool. Why do you suppose she invited us to visit her? Because she's getting along in years and she has decided to make her will. Naturally, before she does so, she wants to see what we, her only relatives, are like. Now, lady. Do you really think she'll leave us some money? If we make the right impression, there's no reason she shouldn't leave us all of it. All we have to do is convince Aunt Martha we deserve it. And how are we going to do that? By showing her we are simple, 
lovable and unspoiled. You remember the original role I played in I Dream of Love? Yes, of course. You weren't half bad. Half bad? I was superb. The critics were mad about me. Brooks Archer said that in all his life... Oh, all right, all right. you were superb. What about it? Well, I, I think I'll play that role for Aunt Martha. Just a simple, unsophisticated girl, unspoiled by success. Well, maybe you can get away with it, but you know I can't act. How am I supposed to behave? You just play the strong, silent type and leave all the talking to me. Well, I only hope you can sell the old lady on our charm. Darling, you are forgetting I am, quote, Broadway's leading younger actress, unquote. When the curtain rings down on my special performance for Aunt Martha, the Richard's money will be ours. <laughs> Yes, I've been meaning to call on you forever so long, Aunt Martha. But my work has always interfered, and just at the last moment... Uh, well, what finally brought you here? Well, when you said in your letter that you weren't feeling well, I simply couldn't stay away. I'm very touched. Of course, the fact that you might get an inheritance has nothing to do with it. Why, Aunt Martha, what a thing to say. I'm not like that. Of course she isn't. Millie doesn't need money. She's one of the finest actresses on Broadway. Oh, I've heard... And what do you do for a living, Gerald? Oh, Gerald works for a Wall Street firm, Aunt Martha. Yeah. He works so hard. They pay him so little. I seem to remember that Gerald's father left him a sizable inheritance. What became of it? The inheritance? Uh, oh, that was lost in poor investment. Yes. I see. I'm afraid there's a good deal about you two I don't know. Well, I haven't done very much, and I haven't gotten very far, Aunt Martha, but Millie's really been a credit to the family name. Everyone's heard of her. <laughs> Notoriety is hardly a guarantee Why, Aunt work. Martha! Now, see here. I want you two to be my guests for a week. Frankly, I want to know what you're like before I decide how to draw up my will. Yes, of course, Aunt Martha. But I hope you'll take care of yourself so you will live for years and years. Thank you, Millie. Now I must ask you to leave me. I'm a bit tired. Oh, certainly, Aunt Martha. Of course, Aunt Martha. We'll talk some more tomorrow. I'm glad we're out of there. She stares at you as if she could see right through you. The room's so dark it was hard to see her. But you can tell she can't last much longer. The main point is, did she fall for a little act? If you ask me, she wasn't exactly bowled over by your performance. Nonsense. I played my role perfectly. She's a bit suspicious now. That's only natural. But before I'm finished, she'll be eating out of my hand. Well, I certainly hope you're right. Just give me a week, darling, and you and I will be heirs to the Richards' fortune. <laughs> Millie was constantly by her aunt's bedside. Millie told her aunt about her Broadway career and read her notices from a large book of clippings. Martha Richards listened quietly, now and then venturing a question, and Millie became more and more certain she'd won the old lady over. By the end of the week, she was quite sure that she'd convinced her aunt of her own simple, unspoiled character. But... Hello, Millie. Gerald, where have you been all night? I've looked every place for you. I spent the night in New York. You've been drinking. So what? You're a fool. What if Aunt Martha heard about it from the servants, just when everything's working out perfectly? So everything's working out perfectly, is it? Yes, it is. Last night, Aunt Martha phoned New York. I listened in on the hallway extension. It was her attorney she was calling, and he's coming out here tonight to draw up her will. You don't say. Well, well. What is the matter with you? You're acting very oddly, Gerald. My dear Millie, it may interest you to know that the greatest performance of your career has gone for nothing. Why, what do you mean? You may be able to sweep Broadway audience off its feet, but not Aunt Martha. Oh, I tell you, she believes in me completely. Oh, does she? 
While Aunt Martha was listening so devotedly to your every word, she had a private detective in New York at work investigating us. She had a private detective? Yes, dear sister. While making the rounds of the nightclubs last evening, I learned that quite a few questions have been asked about us this past week. So that's what she's been up to. Hiring a private detective to pry into our past. And you can guess what she'll do when she learns that I haven't any job and gambled my inheritance away. And what do you think she'll say when she hears you were named as correspondent in three divorce actions and were involved in the Wainwright scam? I'd like to scratch her eyes out. Playing with me like a cat with a mouse. Well, the game's up. We may as well go to our rooms and pack. And walk out on four million dollars? I should say not. There's no use being stubborn about it. We gambled and we lost. Tonight the lawyer will be here and she'll cut us off without a cent. There's nothing we can do about it. Well, I don't give up so easily. There must be something we can do. Well, what, for example? I don't know yet. Let me think. I won't go back to New York so deep in debt I can never get out. For the rest of my life I'd be hearing her voice. Millie, dear, I want you to tell me all about yourself. Where you've been and what you've done. Well, she won't beat me. Before I'll let her cut me off with a cell out. Yes. Oh, yes. What are you planning? Gerald. And Martha is not going to cut us out of her will. Yes? And exactly how are you going to prevent her? If we have nerve enough, we can stop her. We can inherit the whole fortune. Now, you listen to me, Gerald. And listen closely. As Millie explained her idea to Gerald, his face whitened. But she scornfully beat down all his objections, and in spite of his fears, in the end, he agreed to do as Millie suggested. Then in the hours that followed, Millie locked herself in her room and practiced her aunt's signature and her aunt's voice until she was satisfied she could imitate both perfectly. After that, there was nothing to do but wait tensely and nervously until 8 o'clock that night when Millie and Gerald quietly slipped down the hall to their aunt's room. Millie, we can't go through with this. It's crazy. Be quiet, you fool. It's the only way out. But what if we're caught? You know what that would mean. If you do as I say, we won't be caught. Now get hold of yourself and then you knock. You know exactly what you're to do. Yes. Come in. Good evening, Aunt Martha. I I hope you're feeling well, Aunt Martha. Oh, Millie and Gerald, come in. Thank you. It's dark in here, Aunt Martha. Shall I turn on the light? No, that isn't necessary. I prefer the dark. Of course. Just just as you say. Your voice sounds strange, Gerald. Is there anything wrong? Oh, no, no, of course not, Aunt Martha. How do you feel tonight? I'm a little tired tonight. Oh. Gerald, perhaps you ought to fix Aunt Martha's pillow. She doesn't seem very comfortable. Oh, you needn't bother. I'm quite comfortable, thank you. Gerald, fix Aunt Martha's pillow. I can't go through with it. I can't. I should have known better than to count on you. What are you two talking about? What's going on? Nothing. Nothing important, Aunt Martha. Here. Let me fix this pillow for you. But I tell you, I don't want it fixed. Oh, but you do. Millie, don't. Millie, <laughs> fix that pillow. Where from her face? I can't it. <laughs> Millie, don't. She suffered. Oh, be quiet. If you haven't the nerve to go through with this, I have. It's almost over. If this doesn't overtax her heart, nothing will. There. She's limp. She's not struggling anymore. I'll take the pillow away. She's still alive. How do you feel now, dear Aunt Martha? Is there anything more we can do for you? You want to kill me? Everything I've heard about you. Never mind her eyes. They can't bother us now. She's dead. 
Not from suffocation, but from a heart attack. I told you my plan would work. We... We killed... Nonsense. We simply helped nature take her inevitable course. You think of it that way and you'll feel better. You... You aren't human. Well, I'm afraid we haven't time to discuss that. Aunt Martha's lawyer will be here in an hour. Now, will you do as I say or won't you? Now that we've gone this far, I guess I have no choice. Thank heavens you have enough sense to see that. You do exactly as I say and we can't fail. Millie, the car just stopped in front of the house. Must be that lawyer, Jordan. Well, certainly it's punctual. Are you ready for him? No, no, no. I need a little more shading under the eyes. Millie, hurry. You'll be here in a minute. I've never been late for a curtain yet, and I won't be late for this one. Now, you help me on with Aunt Martha's bed jacket. All right, here you are. There. No, no. How do I look? You, you look exactly like Aunt Martha. If I didn't know her body was in that closet, I'd swear you were her. In the dim light of this room, no one can help but think I'm Aunt Martha. Yes, but what about your voice and the things you'll have to know? I have been practicing, Joe. Listen to this. As mistress of this house, I answer only those questions I wish to answer, and I assure you I shall not be tripped up. There. How does that convince you I can play the starring role of Aunt Martha? Yes, I'm convinced. Millie, quick, get in bed. I hear something coming. All right. Now, please stop shaking. I tell you, we can't fail. I shall give the greatest performance of my career. Jordan, please come in. Thank you. I hope you're feeling well. I'm 67 and I feel 87. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't think, Mr. Jordan, you've ever met my nephew, Gerald Richard. Hello, Mr. Jordan. How do you do? Mr. Jordan, I want to have a will drawn up and signed tonight. Tonight? Well, surely you can't be serious, Mrs. Richard. Vast holdings like yours require a will that will take days to draw up properly. What I want is a simple will dividing my entire estate equally between my nephew Gerald and my niece Millicent. But, Mrs. Richards... I'll be frank with you, Mr. Jordan. I have a premonition that there is no time to wait for an involved will. I've been feeling worse than I've admitted to Dr. Jeffries. Quite possibly I won't be here tomorrow to sign a will. I surely hope you're exaggerating, Miss Richard. If I am, we can draw a new will later. Tonight I won't rest easy until I know that my wishes have been put into writing. Very well, Mrs. Richards. If you'll excuse me for a moment, I left my secretary downstairs until I'd seen you. I'll just step out and tell her what you want. She'll draw up the papers in a very short time. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. I won't be long. Well, Gerald, you feel better now? You fooled him, Millie. He's completely taken in. As soon as the will is signed, I'll get rid of him. Thank goodness there's no danger of Dr. Jeffries getting here tonight. No, you might not fool him quite as easily. Well, he's attending a meeting of the State Society of Physicians. Wait a minute. Is Jordan coming back? Yeah. Uh, since all you want is a simple declaration, Mrs. Richards, my secretary won't take long over it. Is this uh, Millicent Richards, your niece, by any chance the Broadway actress? Yes. Have you seen her? Well, yes. I never miss any of her plays, if I can help it. Indeed. And what do you think of her? Well, she always puts on a good show, but privately, I, I think she has a tendency to overact. Oh. You think she overacts, do you? Yes. I take her last play, Why Not Be Happy? Well, I think she played it much too hard for comedy. I'd have preferred to see an actress like uh, Joan Walker in her role. <laughs> the critics didn't agree with you. Gerald, will you please hand me Millicent's scrapbook? You'll find it on the desk there. Really, Aunt Martha? Do you think... Gerald, to... hand me that scrapbook. Very well. I can understand criticism when it's justified, Mr. Jordan. But it seems to me that you're going against my niece's huge public. Here's the scrapbook, Aunt Martha. Thank you, Gerald. 
Now, just a moment, Mr. Jordan, and I'll read you what the critics had to say about Millicent's performance in Why Not Be Happy. Uh, Oh, here we are. This is what Martin Walters, dramatic critic of the Evening Sentinel, had to say. Rarely in 30 years of theater going has this reviewer seen such a fine flair for comedy as was displayed last night by Millicent Richards in her new hit, Why Not Be Happy? And that, Mr. Jordan, is the opinion of one of the best critics in the country. Well, I may be wrong, Mrs. Richards. Naturally, I was only venturing a personal opinion. Excuse me, Mr. Jordan. Yes, Miss Anders. You finished already? Yes, sir. It's just a paragraph, as you instructed. Here's the original and the copy. Good. Now, let me see what you've written. Yes, perfectly straightforward, everything in order. Now we need witnesses. Uh, Miss Andrews will do for one, the butler for the other, if he's handy. He's just out in the hall. I'll get him in, Aunt Martha. Thank you, Gerald. Now, Mr. Jordan, you are sure this will is going to stand up in court? Oh, yes, Mrs. Richards. But if it's probated, it'll certainly leave a good many unsettled problems uh, to your ears. I'm sure they'll be able to handle them. Oh, Phillips. Yes, madam. I want you to witness my will. Certainly, madam. Give me the will, Mr. Jordan. And the pen. Now. Thank you. Now I sign here. Right at the bottom, Mrs. Richards. There. Now the carbon copy. There. Now I feel better. That does it, except for the witnesses. Uh, Phillips, will you sign here? And here, please. Certainly. There. Now you, Miss Andrews. Excellent. Your will is signed at witness, Mr. Richards. Oh, I'm glad. It wasn't too late. Now, if you don't mind, I'm very tired. I'd like to be left alone. Of course, Mr. Richards. Phillips, show Mr. Jordan and Miss Andrews to their room, please. Yes, madam. If you'll just follow me. Good night, Mrs. Richards. Good night, Mr. Jordan. I'll see you in the morning, I hope. Of course you will. They're gone. And the will is signed. See, I told you it would work. So far, but we aren't through this thing yet. Oh, don't be a fool. The money is as good as ours. All we have to do is put Aunt Martha back in her bed and slip out of here, and tomorrow someone will find her dead, and you and I will inherit everything. Mrs. Richards. Mrs. Richards. Dr. Jeffries is here. Mrs. Richards, excuse me, but... (gasps) Dr. Jeffries! Dr. Jeffries, come quick! But it's so dreadful. If only we'd known, if only we'd been able to help her somehow. To think of her dying alone in the night with nobody. Now, there, Miss Richards, you must be brave. Your, your aunt wouldn't want you to take her death like this. You're very kind, Mr. Jordan. She said only last night that she had a premonition she might not live much longer, <laughs> that she felt worse than she admitted to you, Dr. Jeffries. Well, that's quite possible. She hated to seem ill or in any way not her old self. She didn't suffer, did she, Doctor? No, I'm sure it was all over very quickly. Her heart just gave up. She must have died shortly after you left her. For she's been dead about ten hours. Now, I really didn't take her seriously when she spoke of not living through the night. She, she seemed so strong when we were talking, as if she'd grown younger. And she and I were arguing. It was quite like old times. You and Mrs. Richards had an argument last night? Well, not an argument, really. Well, they were just discussing my sister's ability as an actress, Doctor. Yes, Doctor, that's all it was. I hope you won't mind, Miss Richards, but I told your aunt I thought you overacted your roles. Oh, of course I don't mind. 
What did she say to that? Oh, she almost hit the ceiling when I criticized you. She claims you were the finest actress in the country. That Martha always was a dear. Strange that she should have said that, considering she never saw Miss Richards perform. Well, maybe she hadn't, but she opened a book of clippings about Miss Richards and read to me what one of the critics said about her niece. She did? She read you the review? Are you sure? Why, of course I'm sure. I see. And was Miss Richards present at the time? No, I wasn't there, Dr. Jeffries. Why? Because I think, Miss Richards, that Mr. Jordan's criticism was justified. You do overplay your role. I beg your pardon. I never overplayed a role in my life. I'm afraid that you have. You overplayed your biggest role last night. Last night? What do you mean? Your Aunt Martha was an extremely proud woman, Miss Richards. She couldn't stand to be pitied. Just a year ago, she became quite blind. Aunt Martha was blind? What are you seeing? Her eyes were... Yes. They seemed very bright and penetrating. But they were sightless. No one outside this house knew the truth. Mrs. Richards refused to leave her room, kept the light turned down low, saw almost no one. Thus she kept her secret. Oh, but, but if Mrs. Richards was blind, how could she have read me that notice last night? She didn't, Mr. George. She did, she did. An egomaniac actress, disguised as Mrs. Richards, read her own notice to you, then forged Mrs. Richards' signature to a false will. Isn't that so, Miss Richards? Go on, tell him, Millie. You were so clever. The greatest actress in the world. Nothing could go wrong. You had everything worked out to the smallest detail. Don't be quiet, you fool. No court in the world will believe them. I'll give a performance that will sweep a jury off its feet. They'll never commit me, do you hear? Never. <laughs> to play the role of a dead man. He did it so realistically that they buried him and then... Uh, you have to get off. These were Maurice Totland, Mercedes McCambridge, Gladys Thornton, Martin Wilson, and Jimmy Lipton. Original music was played by Paul Taubman. Engineer Alfred King, sound Walt Schaefer. The Mysterious Traveler is written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan.